David, we're here at the FQXI conference talking about observers, the physics of what happens, the nature of events, uh, and uh, events, uh, in one sense, is a very common term which we, which we use. Uh, on the other hand, when you del de delve into the physics, there are a lot of different com complexities. I understand that. But it, the problems to me seem more uh, linguistic, mm -hmm. that we're using an English word event to describe things in quantum mechanics or general relativity that are totally different things. Just use different words, solves all the problems, no? Well, there's something to that, but the, the word starts as an English word, it gets some other meanings and it starts playing a technical role that we kind of still need the English way to understand. So the starting way you explain what an event is to an undergraduate is, you know, it's something like a click or a clap of a hand. It's got a place in space, I clap my hands here, I clap my hands now, so it's it picks out a point in space-time. Mm -hmm. And you tell, you tell your students that what space-time is, is just all the events. And like a lot of things you tell your undergraduate students, it's kind of not exactly true, mm -hmm. but it's their starting point of understanding it. The, the problem is, as you get more into the, the minutiae of the physics and into the more advanced physics we have, the sort of things we seem to need to be events are, firstly, they're really, really small, so our intuition as to what we mean starts breaking down. Secondly, they're quantum mechanical, and so we have all the weirdnesses of the quantum coming into play. We have the idea that somehow I can cl clap my hands and not clap my hands at the same time. That doesn't seem to make sense, but a photon can be here and not here at the same time. Um, so, so you're right, that language is starting to stop working. But the problem is we needed that language to set the theory up in the first place, to understand the theory in the first place. So if we just throw it out completely, then we start losing our grip on how we go from the mathematics to our predictions. And if we can't go from the mathematics to the predictions, we haven't really got physics. We've just got some very beautiful mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what, what, what's the process? I mean, if you're looking at events in space-time, which is in general relativity mm. in, 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 in a sense, where each point is a point in space-time, four, mm. four coordinates to the point, three, three dimensions plus one of time, and we have that as an event, and we have the complexity of, of an event in quantum physics, how do you begin to uh, make progress from that point? Sure. It, it's actually even worse than you say. I mean, we've got, the, when you, we've got the quantum version of general relativity, so we haven't even got one lot of space and time. We've got space-time itself doing this and doing this at the same time. So, so what do you do? <laughs> um, there isn't really a, an agreed answer, um, but you've kind of got two different things you might try doing. You, you might double down on events. You might say, well, look, the event is just so key in how we understand physical theories that if we can't find events in our most fundamental physics, well, we'd better look harder. Um, and somehow we'd better realize that if we haven't got the events yet, we haven't fully understood the theory yet. That's one move you could take. Mm -hmm. The other thing you could do, and this is, I think, what we should do, is say, well, fundamental physics isn't going to be describable in our ordinary language terms. We're not going to find events in it, or we shouldn't expect to. What we better expect to do is somehow find them at an emergent or higher level. So what we want to find is that, okay, in the exact physics that applies at the most fundamental scales, we have to describe that in new language, as you say. But one of the things we'll be able to describe in that new language is that if we kind of fuzz our eyes a bit, if we coarse grain in physics jargon, and we look at the theory, not in all its glory, but at a at a rough level of description. An event will emerge. Exactly, yeah. Or, or in fact, lots and lots of events at the same time will observe, okay. will emerge. We'll have multiple streams of kind of goings on, and inside each of those streams of goings on, we'll find our ordinary events again, okay. or, or something Ta close yeah. enough yeah. to get Take me work. through each of those alternatives in, in some depth. In the first alternative, where you're doubling down on events, that, yeah. that events are very more fundamental. If it doesn't look that way, we better make it, yeah. we better find it. How, how, do you, how do you do that? I mean, what, what are some ways? You don't agree with it, yeah. but what are they? Well, I think the truth is no one quite knows. One, one of the things we could try doing is saying, well, this reminds us that why some people say we need a version of quantum mechanics where the idea of, if not human observation, then at least a definite happening, a definite mm. thing that occurs, mm. is in the theory. Yes. Because so that's the observer, the decoherence of the, of the wave? Well, not quite. What decoherence is telling us is that at the fundamental level of quantum gravity, there are no events, but when decoherence happens, at the approximate level of that, we, then we get out our events roughly. Okay, so you want to, so, so the other group wants to make events even more fundamental than that? Yeah, well, so, fundamental so, at all. Decoherence is never fundamental. Okay, decoherence okay. is always a way to get something in without it being oh, fundamental. Okay, so how do you get it fundamental? 
Maybe you have to reformulate quantum mechanics. That's oh, one reason oh, I don't like it. Oh, that's pretty, maybe you that's have pretty to, serious. Pretty serious, <laughs> yeah. So maybe you say, well, this will get out events in quantum mechanics the same way we'll get out observers in quantum mechanics. It'll be that the whole way quantum mechanics is written needs to be thought about in those terms. Or maybe you'll say the equations of quantum mechanics themselves need tweaking. They need to have the events put right into them. Oh, wow. Uh, and does that, would that require hidden variables or things that we don't know or a deeper level of, of, uh, of some theory that's more deterministic at a lower level that, from which quantum mechanics emerges? That's one way to do it, yeah. If you could create a hidden variable theory that quantum mechanics just described at a course level, then those hidden variables tend to be set up to have exactly the properties you yeah. need. Of course, there's a small matter of having to redo the whole of 20th century physics, yeah. but... And no you know, evidence to... Who and no evidence to back it up, <laughs> yeah, yeah right, but, right. you know... <laughs> well, all right, so, so Lena, let's take the view that, that, that you would take uh, in, in terms of a, a deflationary approach mm. to events. Uh, what are the implications there? Well, the implications are that we're trying to recover the world around us, the, the, the world of events of clicks and flashes, but we shouldn't expect that world to be written into the micro world. We, sh we shouldn't expect our, our intuitions and even our language to track the micro world so well, but what we should expect is that those equations that we write down for the micro world to certain degrees of approximation, if we forget lots of details, they'll, they'll be a sufficiently good structural match to our macro description that we can say, you know, in philosopher's jargon, they instantiate the higher level theories. And we can expect that to be a chain. We wouldn't expect to look at our quantum mechanics, our quantum gravity, and directly get out flashes and clicks and cats and dogs. Mm, right. What we'd expect is to get out a higher level description, maybe at the level of non-quantum gravity quantum mechanics, and from that higher level description to get a higher level description again, and to get back to the macro world in three or four steps. Mm. And in fact, in practice, I think one of the, the conceits we sometimes have at a conference of this kind is that we physicists or philosophers of physics can take our physics and get out a world of chairs and tables and people in one go. The, the reality is maybe we should get, ex expect to get out you know, a world of molecular processes and then there's a whole bunch of other people who maybe are a, a little bit better at filling in the next right. step of the story than we are.